We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Father Lord. Have your own way in the name of Jesus. Touch our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Labo Shalaba, Rando Seko Tolibaha, Rando Shaleko Toliba, Rando Shalaba To Kaliana Labalebo, Rando Shalaba. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father Lord, give us understanding, Lord. Open our hearts to your way, Lord. Bring us freedom, Lord. We pray for freedom, Lord. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We are so grateful to you this evening for bringing us together like this. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you would lead us and you would speak to us father this is an important thing that we're going to discuss tonight and we need you holy spirit we need you not only to speak to us but we need you to bring us great and deep understanding and also we need you to deliver us we need you to set us free we need you to renew our minds. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, um, you are all welcome. Um, yep, it's um, a very good day. And I know that those are online. Uh, we have... Um, We have KPGM back uh, as a church <laughs> meeting together in a physical place. And uh, we are thankful to God for what he's doing. Tonight we're going to really talk on an, an important topic that I believe even as we went through the crisis that we went through and we are still going through. Um, many things are happening and the enemy is trying to take advantage of us but tonight I want you to pay attention wherever you are watching from and I want you to really understand that God knows your situation and God is desirous to bring you the freedom that you need amen we are going to talk about the mind and uh, the theme for tonight is victory over your mind victory over your mind beloved by the end of this i mean the objective for tonight is to learn how to overcome the battle of the mind and live victorious over your thoughts because many of us we are in a place where the enemy is bombarding us and feeding our minds with things that really distract us. There's so much distraction. And I can tell you that the enemy is really manipulating minds in the season. And because of that, many people are, are living in error. They're making a lot of Mass, I mean, huge mistakes. People are running away. People are hearing wrongly. People are making wrong decisions that is affecting other parts and aspects of their life. All because there is a kind of manipulation going on in our minds. A lot of things are going on in our minds. And because of that, we are unable to really allow the, the presence of God, the Spirit of God, to speak to us. And even when he's speaking to us, we are confused in our minds. And the one in interesting thing is that when the devil is really bringing his thoughts, what he does is that, you know, there, there are certain areas that are pleasing to us. Hallelujah. There are certain things that we, 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 we like. So what he does is that, He's going to bring something in that kind of area, something that you like, something that will entice you, something that will draw your attention. So when he brings that, what happens is we tend to fall for it. 
Now, God is not going to let you compromise on his uh, uh, principles, which we want to. I mean, we always want to compromise. True or false? Exactly. So, God is not going to allow you to compromise. And because he's not going to allow you to compromise, the devil is bringing something that will really let it be easy for you to align with. And the moment you go for it, he begins to now hit you on the other side. And I want you tonight, I just want you to really pay attention and we'll look at what the Bible is saying. Amen. Okay. Um, so let's read from Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, 7. Are we there? Okay. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Now, as he thinks in his heart, how can you think in your heart? Hallelujah. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Beloved in the Lord, the heart is where major decisions are made. That is why sometimes you, you are told not to allow your head to rule but your heart. Amen. The heart, whatever you will do, whatever you will say, Bible doesn't say it comes from your mind, it says from your heart. Hallelujah. So the heart has a I mean, a strong influence on your mind and what you do. It is what, that is why Jesus says that. You can, you can say stuff which could just come from your mind and it's not something that you mean it. Jesus wants things that from your heart. He says, you speak or you, uh, you praise me with your mouth, but your hearts are far away from me. What he needs is your heart. So the enemy... Uh, is always going to go after your heart. Although the battle is in the mind, it ha he has to get your heart involved in it. So, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Hallelujah. Your heart must be in your worship. Your heart must be in what you're doing with the Lord. And what the enemy is trying to do is to have that access to your heart. And if he has access to your heart, you have access to your mind. And if he has access to your mind, he will now begin to control. Hallelujah. And therefore, so, I mean, that is why he says, but his heart, is, um, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As a person is thinking in his heart, so is he. What you think about, what you really reflect on on a regular basis will really have an influence on what you do and how you carry yourself hallelujah many thoughts go through our minds every day i mean today you have thought about many things hallelujah half of it probably is from the devil <laughs> Maybe some people, it's uh, maybe 75% is from the devil and 25% is from God. Amen. But many things are going through our mind and not everything that is going through our mind is from God. You are a Christian, I'm a Christian. But not everything that is going through our mind is from God. I will let you understand this as we go on because the devil is always, and a lot of the things, if we talk about even the temptation of Jesus, it is not like I don't think the devil was standing in front of him. It was a mind game that he was playing. Bring in the thoughts. And I believe that you and me, we go through this every day, every moment, where uh, it's like, yeah, steal. No, oh, don't steal. No, God says that stealing is bad. So I will steal. No, steal. Then he will bring something else. You know, that's what he did with Jesus. Just playing that kind of game. And that's what he did with Eve playing the same kind of game and I will, I will let you understand when we come to a point I will bring that into the picture and you will see hallelujah 
So we must, what we need to do and what we're going to try to do tonight is we need to really understand that not every thought that comes to us is from God. There are thoughts that come from the devil and there are thoughts that come from God. What do I do with what comes to me? Hallelujah. What do I do? Every single day, there's a battle ongoing in our minds. Hallelujah. Um, today, you have gone through a lot of battle. There are a lot of things that the enemy wanted to, you to do that probably you didn't do. There are some also that you succumbed to it and you did. Hallelujah. So, we, we all go through things. I mean, if Jesus went through it, who are you to say that you will not go through it? Amen. So you go through it, I go through it, everyone goes through it. In fact, bishop, uh, a pope even goes through it. Everybody goes through it. We need to come to that understanding. And, and that's why, I mean, by the grace of God, what we're discussing or what we're looking at is the battle is the Lord. And this is one of the things that we've been, because every one of us is going through a certain kind of battle. Your battle could be the battle of your thoughts. And there are people that are really struggling. And I, I, have, a, I have someone to share something with us tonight. He's not yet, yet, yet here, but he, when he comes, he's going to share an experience that he had to go through last week. I didn't know this was what we we're going to teach today because, uh, and, I mean, when I, when I began to, I said, I called him and I said, are you willing to share what you went through last week with us? He said, yeah, because we prayed about it anyway. So, the person will come and he will share. So I, I want you to really understand. And you probably might be able to identify it. There are many things that you have done wrong which you wouldn't have done if you had really been able to, when the thoughts came, you had known what to do with the thoughts. Hallelujah. Many of us, I'm not, you see, I don't want, I don't want to say that you did wrong no that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that what you did if you knew what you had to do because many people don't know what they have to do when they are really when they get those thoughts they can't i mean they don't know what to do with it they can't process it they just fall for it and sometimes it's re they do it reluctantly because it's like the thing is pushing at them and they don't want to do it but they don't know. I mean, it's too nice to really refuse. But at the back of your mind, the word of God is really prompting you that this is not it. And you are battling, you are fighting, and you don't even know what to do. But tonight, my prayer is that God will give you ideas. Hallelujah. And you will understand it and you will do it. Amen. So this, this is, this is a, an interesting evening. How, I mean, how we will learn how to overcome the battle of the mind. Amen. Okay, so what is the mind? What is the mind? The, the mind, okay. Our mind is a territory that can be won by the enemy. And that is why we must always be prepared to prevent it from being occupied by him. It is where we process a lot of uh, our thought patterns. Hallelujah. It is where the battle for our lives really uh, goes on. Because do this, don't do this. If you will go to heaven, you will need to. That's why Bible says that be transformed by what? Renewing of your mind. If you will be transformed, your mind has to be renewed. If you come to Christ and your mind is not renewed, the problem is that it will be easy for you to be manipulated. In fact, your transformation will never be complete until your mind is renewed. Because Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me show you this. How can I, how can I decide that I will come to church when my mind is not renewed and what my old life is for me this evening to be at the pub to drink? Hallelujah. 
the transformation that will really uh, i mean uh, uh, show in my life or manifest in my life that i have transitioned from that to this will have to happen by the renewing of my mind for my mind to know that this is not right hallelujah so i need to let go because if i can it is not by anything that the bible says that be ye do what be ye what by the so if you your mind is not renewed you will not be transformed so the renewal of your mind comes before you will experience transformation in your life so many of us our minds are not renewed so we say we are christians but we live in the old lifestyle why because our minds have not been renewed until such a time that our minds will be renewed i'm telling you it's going to be tough and difficult for you to be able to begin to live a transformed life so you see many christians today they are saying that i am a christian but they are still standing where they were doing exactly what they used to do but sunday after sunday they will go to church if you speak to him about something that is really crucial in the bible his mind is not able to even grasp it because it's not renewed hallelujah that is why bible says for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of god that mind cannot process this how can you tell me that somebody died on a cross two thousand years ago and then he saved me so the person somebody can say that i am for christ now but everything that he's doing is not in conformity with what christians do everything that he's doing is just things that are in his past life now what does the bible say second uh corinthians five seventeen. what does it say if someone is in christ all things behold everything is what hallelujah so how can you be a new person but think in the old way how can you put um new wine in old wine skin hallelujah it won't work beloved it will not work so we need to really come to that kind of understanding that we will have to really see ourselves as transformed people and that can only happen when our minds are renewed hallelujah and the enemy knows that so he's consistently fighting with us in our minds and uh there's a cycle of thoughts cycle of thoughts hallelujah cycle of thoughts now what is a thought a thought is an unspoken hallelujah it's an unspoken word a thought is still a word but it's not spoken in your mind hallelujah but it is activated the moment you speak it as long as you have not spoken it it is still it remains a thought but it is as activated to become a word the moment you speak it and when you speak it it has power hallelujah and every every thought has a cycle it has a beginning and it has an end it will begin you will begin to think about something and you can either kill it and not allow it to go its full cycle and really become a reality or you can entertain it and allow it to really happen hallelujah so we all need to really be careful when a thought comes we will look at when a bad thought comes to your mind what do you do with it but we'll get there hallelujah we have good thoughts and we have bad thoughts true or false okay good thoughts come from god bad thoughts come from satan because god is never going to give you a bad thought 
he's not bad. He's, a, he's not going to give you a bad thought. So every bad thought comes from Satan. And when a bad thought comes from Satan, first thing you need, crucify it, cut it off. Hallelujah. Don't entertain it. Don't entertain it. It is sent to you for a purpose. Many of us have kept consistently entertaining bad thoughts and reflecting on it. And I mean, it's like a baby. We just keep really cuddling it. We, we just play around with it. And as you are pr playing around it with it, you know what you are doing? You are trying to give him a place to settle. But unfortunately, we don't know. Beloved in the Lord, the devil will always bring a bad thought. But you need to know what to do with that bad thought. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we don't deal with it, it keeps, like I said, it's a cycle. So it will come again. And it keeps growing. So that is why you see, and you can identify with it, I can identify with it, because we've all gone through it. And some of us still go through it. Even though we are Christians, we are in church, we still go through these things. And therefore, we always are vulnerable. We are always vulnerable. Because we, are, we keep allowing it to continue to influence us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't deal with it, some of us, you know what we do? Sometimes we leave it. We don't really allow. Okay, we will not really succumb to it today, but we also don't deal with it. Hallelujah. We also, let me give you a typical example. You get a thought to really uh, steal something. The first thing you need to do is to cut it and let uh, the, the thought know that it is against the word of God. I'm not going to do this. And you kill it. But if you begin to, okay, I mean, okay, it's not right. It's not right. Okay, let me leave it. I mean, okay. And you don't deal with it. You overlook it and you leave. Beloved in the Lord, Obeba view. Mr. Obeba he will come again. When he comes again, he will try. So the first one didn't work. So he will try something else. Because maybe he wanted you to take this one. Actually, this is not something really, really indeed that you need. So you are able to overcome it. But you didn't kill it with the fact that it's a sin. So I'm not going to do it. You, you understand what I mean? So you put it at bay but you haven't killed it. Amen. The next time, he's going to come with something else that probably you need. And I'll show you that when, we, when I, I'm, I'm talking to you about what Jesus, Jesus' temptation and what he had to go through. I will, I will just let you um, understand it better. So he will continue to come until that cycle is broken. Because if you don't break it and you don't cut it off and you don't destroy it, the devil is not going to leave you alone. He will come again and come again until he makes sure. That's why, I mean, there are people, let me tell you something. There are people, both boys and girls, men and women, male, female, let me say male, female, because I don't want to use any age category. Both male and female. Many people have fallen into fornication and adultery because when the thought came at first, they didn't kill it. They didn't. They tried to put it at, okay, no, this guy, no, this girl, no. Then they put it somewhere. But it's a cycle. So it goes on and it will come again. Until such a time that you kill it and let that thought know that it is evil and I'm, going, I'm not going to do it because it's a sin against God. The only way Joseph was able to run, regardless of, the, of, of, of uh, the, the possibility that he will go to prison if the woman reports, her, or reports him, 
the only reason he was able to run away was he didn't want to sin against God. So he knew it was a sin. But remember that he had played around with it for far too long. He had played around with that woman for far too long. Because that was not the first day the woman made a pass at, her, at him. Hallelujah. It's been going on. And he said, oh, oh, no, please. You are my boss's wife. How can I do that? Okay. You know, in, 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 in our local, uh, uh, um, I mean, like, local circles, you know, there's a thought that, oh, even if a, if, uh, a man tells a woman that uh, I like you and she says yes, then it means that she's cheap. So she has to really bluff a little bit. You, you know, you haven't killed it. And every man knows that. So they'll keep pushing. Hallelujah. They'll forget that you're a Christian. Because every woman does that. Hallelujah. So until such a time that you will make a decision that, look, I'm not going to, I mean, look, this is my position. But unfortunately, many of us, both men and women, we are unable to, because we, we sometimes feel that, okay, we don't want them to feel bad. Amen. You want to go to hell? Than letting somebody feel bad? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, you need to really be bold to kill it. And he kept tell, pushing it aside, pushing it aside, until the last minute, the woman got him alone. And he had to go to prison for that. If he had killed it earlier, I don't think he would have probably gotten to that point. Amen. Hallelujah. So, all that you are saying, when a bad thought comes to me, what do I do with it? Number one. When a bad thought comes to your mind, when you get a bad thought, the first thing you ought to do is reject it. Reject it. Bring it captive to the obedience of Jesus. Reject it. If you don't reject it and you play around with it, it's going to really hurt you. What did Jesus do? Hallelujah. What did Jesus do when he was tempted? He killed it. And the devil came to him and first began, because Jesus had done a 40-day fast, he was hungry. The Bible says he was hungry. So, like I told you earlier, he's going to bring something that you want. So, this guy is hungry. Let me try this one. So, he first says that, okay, you, got, you are hungry, huh? You just finished a 40-day fast. But there's no food in the wilderness. They don't, nobody sells bread. Nothing. But I know after 40 days, there's so much power in you. You can do anything. Why don't you turn these stones into bread and eat? Now, maybe you hadn't thought about that. So immediately it came, oh yeah, I have power to turn stones into bread. Does God approve that at that time that's what you have to do? Actually, is it a sin to turn stones into bread if I have the power to do that? But a circumstance and who is giving you that thought? You need to discern quickly. So the moment he discerned, the devil was around. What he did was, okay, if I do that, it will mean I am obeying him. And I don't have to obey him. He doesn't have to instruct me. He doesn't have to tell me what to do. Now, turning bread, uh, stones into bread is not a sin. Yet, if you obey the devil to do what he wants you to do, that becomes a sin. Amen. Look, there are many things that, many decisions we are making that are so wrong and so sinful, we play around with them. So Jesus said, no way, I'm not doing that. And he uses scripture to counter it. How many scriptures do you know to be able to counter the thoughts that the enemy is going to bring to you? 
How many scriptures do you have? Hallelujah. But he is not, like I said, it's a cycle. So he is not ending with you there. So he goes to the next thing and he says, okay. I mean, I know you have power and I know your father says he has power. And he, he's even said that if you jump from anything, he won't let your foot strike a stone or whatever. So, okay, let's go. And uh, Jesus stands on this top uh, hill and then he says, jump down. And the truth of the matter is that if he jumps, God will really save him anyway. But the point is that who are you obeying? So he goes like, yeah, I know. And that's scriptural as well. He will save me. But I also know another scripture that tells me that I don't have to put him to test. Why would I have to be jumping on every... It's like God, oh, hey, I have power. God protects me. Okay, just follow me. I'm going to stand in the middle of the street. I'm not a magician. God is not a magician. And let's see whether the car will hit me and I will die. Amen try it. You will be Allah should be funeral home. Amen. The point is that you can't put God to test. Hallelujah. What is the essence of that? Why would you, is it, are you showing off? What are you trying to do? Hallelujah. So he's trying to manipulate you and it is not always that he's going to manipulate you with bad thoughts. He's going to manipulate you with certain thoughts that don't seem to be bad. But you need to discern and decipher from what is coming to you. What is from the Lord and what is from the devil. Because if you are unable to do that, what's going to happen is that you will always be doing things thinking that God approves of it, but God doesn't approve of it. And that is why God says that there are people who do miracles and he doesn't even know them. They will come to me and say, I don't know you. But did they do wrong? They healed the sick anyway. But he says, yeah, you did that, but I, I don't really recognize you. Did I ask you to do that? Did you do it for me? Who did you do it for? Hallelujah. We ought to be very careful. So when bad thoughts come, the first thing we ought to do with a bad thought is to reject it. Hallelujah. Number two. So we can choose to reject. Number two is that we can choose to entertain it. Now, the Lord is not going to, I have had bad thoughts. What do I do? I have choices. The first choice is to reject it. The second choice is that you can choose to entertain it. You can choose, you can choose to reject it. You can choose to entertain it. And God is not going to really, I mean, he is there. You make that decision because you have a will. And you have to do what you want to do with your will. Hallelujah. And that is exactly what happened. The second, third, and fourth things I'm talking about are the, what really happened in the garden and which I'm going to really take you through very soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, how do you entertain it? You give it consideration. You make, or you make room for it and turn it over and over inside your mind. You play around with it. You play around with it. How does it look like? What should I do with this? What should I do with this? Is it okay? What, what must I do? And you keep really playing around with it. Amen. I said you keep doing what? Playing around with it. And if you keep playing around with it, what happens is that it's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. I said it's doing what? It's going to do what? Come to pass. Okay, let's go to Genesis. Genesis, sorry. We're going to go to Genesis. It's okay.
Oh, this is hard. Okay, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Looks like my Bible is misbehaving. Give me a second. All right, okay. Let's l- read from verse 1. Uh, chapter chapter 3, verse 1, yes. I wanted to go straight there, but let's read from verse 1. That gives us much more. Uh, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord uh, God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say, and l- well, watch this carefully, did God really say, what is his business with that did god really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden the woman said to the serpent we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden but god did say we must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die oh no you will not certainly die the serpent said to the woman For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. What would you do at that point? What would you do at that point? And that's what happens to us most of the time. You know what happens? We get a little bit inquisitive and excited and want to know more beloved in the lord if you know your bible you stick to your bible hallelujah that is why many of us many many of us and i i I mean uh uh these (laughs) the young guys around me are always saying they are telling me stuff plenty And they are telling me that there are teachings going on right now which says that uh, God has given you a brain and you need to use your brain and you need to work hard and you need to... And unfortunately, it has no scriptural basis. Hallelujah. Watch it. Let me tell you something. If that is not equal to this, I don't know what it is equal to. Because... It it teaches men to be independent of God. Don't depend on him. But God has said, depend on me. All that the devil was telling Eve, and this was a game that was playing with Eve in her mind. And many of us today have fallen into it. Many, you're watching me, but you are even confused because you're hearing that as well. And in your mind, you are confused. You're you, you asking yourself a lot of questions. You see, every question you have, the answer is in the Bible. Every question you have, the answer is in the Bible. Don't let anyone confuse you. Because what they're trying to do is watch the tactic. Watch the way they play in it. If, it's not, if you watch it closely, you will be able to discern that it's the same thing that happened in the garden. Why are you supposed to be dependent totally on God? Why did he give you a brain? God gave you a brain to use it, but he doesn't want your brain to develop so you can use it. So some pastors are telling you to depend on God, depend on God. Use your brain. Your brain is big enough to really do this, do that, do that, do that. And every day, they bring in these thoughts, bombarding you with these thoughts. And the devil, anyway, I'm, I'm going somewhere else. He's gotten agents to do that for him. Hallelujah. So be careful. You see, I'm, I'm telling you all the time. 
Be careful what you listen and who you listen to. It's simple because Paul said, you see, go into your Bible. Paul said it. He said that, look, some people will come after me and they will tell you things that you don't have to believe and obey. Hallelujah. And he said that even if me, I come back and tell you another gospel, don't believe it. There's only one gospel. Hallelujah. People are trying to manipulate people. And unfortunately, this battle is in our thoughts. So many of us, we don't even fall for it the same day. We get confused. And we begin to toss it around in our minds. And we begin to entertain it. Hallelujah. And as you keep entertaining it, what's going to happen is that you will fall for it. I'm telling you, you will fall for it. Let's go on. For God knows that when you eat... No, no, no. Go back. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, God is saying something to you. Somebody is telling you something else. Now, what do you believe? Because, and let's watch what the woman did. Go to the next. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. Now, watch it. All the time that she's walking around, didn't see that the fruit was nice? Didn't she know that this fruit, if you look at it, wow, it, it looks nice. And if you eat, it will be nice. Didn't she know all that? But because she allowed the enemy to really manipulate her, she stayed true to God for the day. I have told you, do not dialogue with the devil. There is only one language he understands. Get up. Hallelujah. You can't, listen, you can't come by him. around with him. There is um uh I, I think was it this year that we saw this like a chicken trying to play around with a snake. Hallelujah. Where do you think in the next minute that chicken is going to end up? Now I know it's good for food. And I know that even if I eat, in fact, God is bad. Oh. Hallelujah. God doesn't want, God is, God is, he doesn't want anybody to be like him. Ask Satan, how did he come to where he is? Hallelujah. If it is nice, he wouldn't be where he is. But he wants you to fall like he fell. Amen. And you begin to entertain that thought. He is really trying to get you out of your protection so he can strike at you. I'm telling you, he's trying to get you. That's what boxers do. They try to really play around you to get you to lower your guard and then they hit you. If you stick to your guard, telling you. And what is your God? The Bible. If you can stick to the Bible, if you can check your Bible, if you can really read your Bible, if you can allow the Holy Spirit to give you understanding in the Word of God, I'm telling you, it's going to be very difficult for the devil to play around with you. Hallelujah. So, we need to, you, you have a choice either to entertain it or to rubbish it. But unfortunately, we keep entertaining it. And as we keep entertaining it, now we think about all the things, the good things that have been said about it, and we want to really try it. 
So many of us are trying things that is leading us into sin. But we could have really let it go at the first instant. Hallelujah. You can also choose to meditate on it. Number three. When a bad thought comes, number one, we can choose to, number one, reject it. And uh, that's the number one thing you ought to do. Just reject it. Destroy it. Bind it. Cast it out. Do whatever you want to do. But if you don't do that, the next thing you can choose to entertain it or you can choose to meditate on it. And many of us are meditating on it. Many of us, we are meditating on it. And we are unable even to pray. Hallelujah. We go and we lie down. We are making CCC. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. I think we've said this one million times here. And this is a very good example because 80% of you, I don't know you guys online, but 80% of the people who sit in our church are not married. So I love to use this example. Don't make CCC with men or women. Hallelujah. Some people say that, oh yeah, you have seen three girls, I don't know which one. Stop making the CCC. Hallelujah. Hmm. Pray. Hallelujah. If you make CCC, you make CCC with your eyes. Begin to pray and ask yourself, where, what do I want to achieve in my walk with God? And is this person going to really help me get there? He goes to church. In fact, when he fasts, he breaks at 12. You break at 6. You go 3 days. And you want to carry this. You begin not to even do the fast at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you need to understand, who am I in the Lord? Because the devil is going to bring all kinds of things. All kinds of things. And instead of you to make a decision based on the word of God, to reject it or to really uh, cast it out or whatever, or bring it before the Lord, now you are, you, you are meditating on it every day. And then you go and sit down. Instead of reading your Bible, you are meditating on men and women. Is that what you do? Hallelujah. Don't meditate on it. Make a decision with it. Hallelujah. Pray about it. Bring it before the Lord. Let God help you to really make a good decision on it. Hallelujah. Don't carry it along. I mean, what is wrong is wrong. Don't carry it along in your mind for far too long. Make a decision with it. And a quick one. Hallelujah. And number four, you can choose to cultivate it. And as you entertain it, you play around with it, meditate 